The literal existence of the recently released film Royal Love Story from the Grave is the epitome of perseverance and serendipity. Every man, woman, and young adult should know the origin story of this film. Why? Because the creation of this film is such a relevant case study that eloquently illuminates our lives, the choices we make, and our decisions about when to surrender a dream to purported common sense. In today's world, we're all striving to reach challenging personal, family, or work-related goals. Or maybe you have been blessed or cursed with an unwavering interest in tackling monstrous community goals, like extracting the venomous fangs of American politics that have been blatantly rendering intelligent discussions swollen beyond recognition. Or maybe your pleasure is to disarm the deadly assaults against democracy in America, Ukraine, and around the globe. Whatever dream-chasing objective we have resigned ourselves to overcome, each of us envisages a harmonious future seemingly within our grasp. However, the monumental decision that can change the outcome of our quest is, should you invest your precious time, limited resources, and finite energy in the actions necessary to cause your envisioned future to come true? We all know that any worthwhile journey will be littered with obstacles causing us to contemplate abandoning the adventure. Before you surrender your beautiful dream to rationality, discover exactly what happened to me when I decided to embark on a journey to simply make a nonsensical dream come true. This is the true story of how my very first film project came to be a feature-length movie that I produced, wrote, and directed. I literally had no experience, absolutely zero Hollywood connections, and a film production budget of zero dollars. If those bare-bone facts were not enough to expeditiously sentence my dream to death, I was also working a full-time job in a totally unrelated industry and residing in the state of Florida, nowhere near Hollywood, California, or New York City. As my absurd adventure unfolds below, Make a mental note of the number of times I was plainly presented with opportunities to gracefully walk away and let my movie production imagination, royal love story from the grave, die an unassuming and tranquil death with dignity. How did my fascination with dream chasing begin? Since I was 12 years old, I always wanted to make a Hollywood movie. I held on to my movie-making desire for decades without ever calculating the probability of success, the potential market, the astronomical costs, or any barriers to entry. In October of 2008, I decided to take a few preposterous risks. I transferred out of my management job and became a part-time worker, thereby severing my income by 50%. Then I used my newly acquired extra free time to read books about how to write, produce, and direct a movie. From 2008 to 2011, I focused on simply reading tremendous amounts of filmmaking books. In July of 2011, I stumbled upon a newspaper advertisement posted by the Miami Film School of Hollywood, Florida. This minuscule independent film program offered to teach students how to write, shoot, direct, and edit their own 8- to 10-minute short film. I immediately enrolled in the school's 16-week program. Two weeks into my filmmaking coursework, I had an epiphany based on my earlier years of self-study and my current introductory coursework at the film school. I concluded the following. 1. The film school program would be my only opportunity to create a feature-length film and that I must not make a short film. 2. A truly powerful film is one in which the actions of the characters and the musical soundtrack both skillfully tell the story together, with dialogue relegated to secondary in importance. 3. I must find a story written way back in the 1900s and transform it into my first feature-length film. In other words, I enhanced my original movie-making dreams to include aspects that made my endeavor astronomically more complicated. Even though I was in a firmly structured short film program, my reality was that I was not making an 8-10 to 10 minute short film. I was creating nothing less than a feature-length movie. In addition, 
I was creating a silent film with a thundering cinematic music track, a film loosely based on a yet-to-be-determined short story written in the 1900s. In September of 2011, I found a short story in the December 1908 issue of Harper's Magazine called The Shell of Sense by Olivia Howard Dunbar. I decided to transform that 100-plus-year-old short story into my very first feature-length film, Royal Love Story from the Grave. In December of 2011, my short film program at the Miami Film School finished. One of the critical benefits of attending this film school was lifetime access to the school's expensive film editing equipment. Between December of 2011 and May 2012, I completed the final draft of my screenplay for Royal Love Story from the Grave using Final Draft software. I filmed all of the scenes at one location in Coral Springs, Florida using a Panasonic HMC-150 camera. Then, I began editing my film at the school using Apple's Final Cut Pro 7. Suddenly, in mid-2012, the Miami Film School was sold to a larger film school and was eventually relocated to the Philippines. I was devastated because I still needed access to my school's film editing equipment so I could edit the remaining 80% of my film. My only alternative was to purchase my own film editing system similar to the setup at the now-defunct Miami Film School. The cost to duplicate their film editing setup ranged from $4,000 to $10,000. As my outrageous filmmaking dream began to slip away through no fault of my own, everything got exponentially worse. Not having an extra $4,000 to $10,000 was not my only problem. In mid-2011, unbeknownst to me, Apple released a more affordable film editing solution called Final Cut Pro 10 for $300. This news was bittersweet because Apple's Final Cut Pro 7 and their newly released Final Cut Pro 10 were not compatible. In other words, I had to teach myself Final Cut Pro 10 and edit my movie from the very beginning. Remember, the first 20% of my film was edited using Final Cut Pro 7. Between mid-2012 and May 2017, I finished editing the final version of Royal Love Story from the Grave. Then, I continuously, year after year, tried to contact Hollywood movie studios, producers, and distributors in an effort to get my film into movie theaters. For five years, I experienced rejection after rejection after rejection. The entertainment industry was not interested in any correspondence from me. Because I was still a part-time worker with a little bit of free time, I decided to return to school and try a different approach. In May of 2017, I was accepted into an advanced management program at Babson College in Massachusetts. In November of 2017, Babson College held their annual rocket pitch for students and alumni. This was an opportunity to pitch entrepreneurial endeavors to a large audience of students, faculty, entrepreneurs, investors, and startup supporters. As a student at Babson, I was selected to pitch my idea of independently distributing my film to movie theaters in North America. Nobody was interested. Everyone was looking for the next Airbnb, Lyft, and Uber. Not a sappy romantic melodrama from a first-time producer-director. Between November 2017 and January 2020, I returned to contacting more and more players in the entertainment industry with absolutely no success. Suddenly, in mid-January 2020, COVID-19 hits the United States. My chances of getting my movie into a movie theater went from barely no chance to absolutely no chance, because eventually, all movie theaters were closed. In November of 2020, the American film market, a major film industry event in Santa Monica, California, switched from an in-person event to an online event only due to COVID-19. This major change was extremely helpful, but bittersweet. Why? I was always aware of the American film market as a yearly in-person event, but it was always too expensive for me to attend. I was 2,700 miles away. 
As an online event for the first time ever, it was significantly more affordable for me to participate. It was a financially welcomed change for me personally, but that significant price reduction was precipitated by COVID-19 and all its accompanying shutdowns and related tragedies. Between November 2020 and February 2021, I personally contacted every individual who attended the 2020 American film market. After contacting over 1,400 people, only one person offered to help connect my film with various streaming services. In March of 2021, Royal Love Story from the Grave began streaming on Tubi and instantly reaching audiences in the United States, Canada, Mexico, Australia, and New Zealand. As we reflect upon this film's journey, we can see that its success and many failures were the result of not only my actions, but many circumstances outside of my direct control. There were such formidable obstacles stifling the creation and distribution of this film. At any point during the 12-plus years between October of 2008 and March of 2021, I could have easily given up and said, It's absolutely ridiculous for me to think I can make an interesting movie with no experience, no money, and no Hollywood connections. What's the moral of my story? You never know what circumstances outside of your control will be serendipitously aligned to help materialize whatever your magnificently beautiful dream might be. At some point in life, we will all be faced with the life-altering decision to pursue a magnificently beautiful dream or simply give up and do something more realistically attainable. To be fair, some dreams require the daunting dilemma of inspiring not just yourself, but also hundreds and thousands of people in every town, nationally and internationally. If I can persevere until serendipity favors me, you can duplicate my actions by applying the same perseverance and serendipitous fortunes to help you reach your personal, family, or work-related goals. Do not let your dream chasing die in vain. There should be no reason to give up. We can always pivot seek new perspectives, and persevere until serendipity causes cordial politics and unwavering democracy domestically and abroad.